Hi, I'm Victoria Lougheed and I work with Family Caregivers of British Columbia. Welcome to the second half of my uh, emotions of caregiving, uh, dealing with some of the more difficult emotions that we encounter as caregivers. Today, I'm gonna be talking about resentment, worry and grief. I'm just gonna set up my screen share here. Just hang on a second. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some of these emotions that we wrangle as caregivers and how we can uh, work them more effectively uh, in order to not have them interfere uh, with our caregiving uh, tasks and responsibilities. So caregiving can bring up a lot of complex emotions and uh, your relationship can be impacted by those. We don't really want to have that happen if we can help it, but it's not always easy to talk about these emotions and sometimes we can't talk about them with family or friends or we certainly can't talk about them with our care recipients. So what can we do? Well. My first suggestion is for you to contact our caregiver support line. The number will be in the last slide. And uh, that, that line is available Monday to Friday, eight till four and uh, sometimes till seven, depending on the day that information is again on that slide. And we also have some great resources in our, um, on our website, in our Caregiver Learning Center that you can access and take a look at. You go to the website, you click on resources, and then you go down to Learning Center and you can watch things, you can listen to things, and you can read things that will help you navigate some of these emotions. The first emotion that I'm going to be talking about today is um, resentment. What causes it? Well, it can come up when you feel that sense of unfairness. Maybe a family member isn't doing as much as you are um, and you feel they should be doing more. Maybe your care recipient is going through a tough time themselves or struggling against a loss of independence or doesn't like to be told what to do and that's what they feel is happening. Resentment can build up if you don't deal with it. It's best to be proactive about this one because uh, feelings of resentment left unchecked uh, turn into anger and turn into bitterness and create a lot of discord in your relationship. You don't want that. So what can we do? Um, well, well, actually, let's start with the risks. What are the risks of resentment? Without enough non-caregiving outlets in your life, uh, it can take you over and make you very prone to things like depression. And you don't want to go down that path if you can avoid it. So it's a really good idea to look for avenues that you can pursue outside of caregiving that will help to restore some of the balance in your life. Um, naming this tricky emotion is the first thing that you can do to start putting it back in its place. Um, Talk to a trusted confidant, a friend, or our team at the caregiver support line uh, to get some release. You can vent to a journal, write out your feelings, scribble that out, get it out, and then close the book and be done with it. It's a wonderful tool using a journal uh, to talk about your feelings. Um, other things that you can do are pursue an activity or hobby that helps replenish your emotional energy. It can be anything from reading a book that you really enjoy to painting or walking or photography. Anything that helps you just feel good um, is going to help you to get that feeling of resentment uh, back down to size. So now we're gonna talk about worry Worry is another difficult emotion that can very easily take you over as a caregiver. Uh, risks of worry uh, include losing perspective, um, getting over fatigued because worry can often interfere with your sleep. Um, and that can put you at risk for all kinds of things. Loss of sleep can lead to, you know, more compromised immune system response. It can lead to, you know, being more prone to catching colds and bugs. And it can make you a little bit uh, less careful 
Um, you can make mistakes. You can be more prone to cutting yourself in the kitchen. All kinds of things can come from worry because it distracts you. So um, it's not something we can just turn off. We have to accept that worry is going to come along with caregiving. Uh, we will worry about the future. We will worry about what's going to be coming along this journey. Um, but we have to keep it in its place. If you find yourself uh, thinking any kind of thing that starts with what if, that's a sign that you're worrying. And the best thing you can do is stop yourself right there and say, no, not what if, what is what is happening today, what is going on for me right now, uh, because that's what you have control over. One of the biggest tools that I use uh, for worry, both for myself and for my daughter, is to make a circle on a piece of paper. And inside that circle, I write down all the things that I have control over. Then I draw a bigger circle around it, and I write down all the things that I don't have control over. And what that does is it really helps me put my focus in the right place and realize where I might be wasting precious energy worrying about things I can't control. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Um, again, if you notice that you're worrying and feel like you can't talk to anyone about it, our caregiver support line staff are there to listen to you, validate your experience and feelings, and maybe give you some ideas or resources that may help you navigate uh, that situation you're worrying about. The last emotion of the day is grief. This is a tough one. This is one that people who aren't caregiving often do not understand. One of the challenges that grief in caregiving can bring is that, um, well, you may be grieving the loss of what you had in that caregiving relationship. You may be grieving um, the person that's with you now. It can feel very strange to be in that place where you're grieving a loss of independence, grieving a loss of memory, grieving, in my case with my daughter, grieving a future that I had envisioned that isn't going to be coming to pass. It can be difficult when, you know, you go through a milestone uh, in your relationship, like an anniversary or a birthday, and your care recipient is not there to celebrate it with you um, the way that they used to be. So what are the risks of grief? Well, that long goodbye, that feeling of grief in the moment when you're with your care recipient, it can lead to feelings of guilt. You can feel, you know, ashamed of yourself even for grieving something that you might think you didn't have any right to want. Um, mourning the loss of a, of a companion is also, it's a risk factor for depression. When you focus on these kinds of feelings or when they surround you, it can lead to depression. And that's something you want to try and avoid uh, when you can. So when you notice this feeling coming up, what can you do about it? Well, the first thing you can do is acknowledge that this is a normal feeling and part of your caregiving journey. It's okay to feel this grief along the journey. Um, while you're with your caregiver, um, it's, it's a perfectly normal response to your situation. Um, be realistic about what's going on for you. Try not to do things like paste on a happy face and pretend nothing's wrong. If you're feeling sad and, and feeling that loss, try and find someone that you can talk to about it. Sometimes it can be difficult to talk to family or friends about it. They may not understand. That's where our caregiver support line staff can help you. They do understand. They're trained. They can listen. They can validate that feeling and your experience, give you some ideas on how to move through it and some resources to help you along your path. One of the best things you can do if you're experiencing moments of grief is be gentle with yourself, be kind to yourself, give yourself time and space to get through that. Write it out in a journal, 
do some art about it, take yourself for a walk and ground yourself in nature, really just observe what's going on around you during that walk. Notice the hues of green in the trees, the colors of flowers, listen for sounds, really immerse yourself in that experience. And that can help replenish your energy and make you feel better about your experience overall. And then it can help you sort of put everything in, into place, into perspective. Understand that these feelings are part of your caregiving journey. They are going to be coming along with you on the ride. You will feel them. They will come up. Try not to avoid dealing with them. Try not to put them off. Find ways to navigate them and, and move through them so that you can be fully present as a caregiver and fully involved in that caregiving relationship again. Moving on to our last slide, I just want to talk about some of those resources that I mentioned earlier. Um, you can access um, all kinds of information on our website. I'll be clicking on that in a moment. But I just wanted to emphasize for you that our, our free caregiver support line is available Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 7. We also have some amazing free virtual support groups that you will want to take advantage of in order to really find people who understand what you're experiencing. So when it comes to the website, I'm just going to take you over there. Let me see if I can make this pop up. Perfect. So here is our website under resources and education you'll go down to the Caregiver Learning Center. There, you'll find four big boxes, read, watch, listen, and take a class. Under read, you'll notice we've got information organized into a few different categories. There are about 14 of them here. And here is the emotional side of caregiving. If you click on that, you'll see articles and blogs and tip sheets. Going back now to the big squares, if you click on watch, you'll find videos organized in the same way. And here they are, the emotional side of caregiving, uh, videos that you can watch to kind of just move you through, help you feel um, a part of, help you feel kind of connected to what's going on with you right now. Under Listen, we've got an amazing podcast hosted by the wonderful Bill Israel. And under the podcast, under Quick Links, you can talk, you can see the different uh, pieces that we have in there. We have grief as a healing gift, grief as a human experience, and what I was talking about a little bit today, grieving before a death. How do you do that? How does it look? So those are some of the pieces that um, we can help you with here at Family Caregivers of British Columbia. Try to feel those feelings, move through them, find ways to put them into perspective, but don't avoid them because honestly, it's not going to work for very long. Reach out to us. We're here for you. And I look forward to talking to you the next time we have a leaning in. In the meantime, take care. <laughs>